you with that humongous picture. I mean, humongous picture. Not just big, I mean, we gotta go humongous picture. That way you know that you don't just fix the one problem, you go for multiples. All right, today's subject is ice machine. It's not making ice, we're turned off. No ice at all down here. This machine's beyond ready to be replaced, but we'll see what we can do to make it run. All right. Nickel coating's pretty much completely gone. Needs cleaned. Let's see what happens here. All the buttons are busted here. See if we can reach in there with our pin, because we can't quite reach it. Let's see if we can make this thing run. All right, so it's adding water. The compressor just kicked on. Let's see if it starts getting cold. Can't get into this at all, because we have a freezer right beside it, which makes it a little more difficult to work on it. And a shoving system right beside the other side and stuff right over top the top. So we check the filter. It seems to be letting the water through. That's one of the things that usually goes wrong. And so we're back to trying to see the lines going to the remote condenser. One's fairly hot. The other one coming back is fairly cold. Alright, so it just shut off the water. It's something Scotsman has a tendency to do when they're sensor and their line does not get cold enough quick enough. That little line sensor is right there. So we may have a dirty condenser, it could be low on refrigerant, because what it's doing is trying to get that panel colder. So they're going to start up again. So we'll see what we got. I may have to throw the gauges on and may go up on the roof take a look because I know there's no maintenance or anything like that being done on these. So we're running about 35 on our suction, about 220 on our head. So the pressures look about normal, but our discharge gas here isn't very hot. That usually would be hot enough to burn your hand. And eventually it gets hot, but not to impress. Um, they said it runs for a while, sometimes it makes ice, then it starts to fall behind. You know, I can tell the suction line, it's coldish, but it's not real cold. Everything leading me down the path of, might be a little low on refrigerant. Right up on the roof, check the condenser coil. The dirty coil will uh, buy you some time for being low. So we'll go up there and see what we got going on. Here's one of those things, guys, you want to watch out for. It's grease on the roof. You walk through it, and then you track it right onto your ladder. And then next thing you know, you're making your rungs slippery and everything else. So let's see what we've got here. I can see through the coil down at the bottom, so it's obviously not too horribly dirty. Got multiple dryers on this thing, or are those mufflers of some sort? Interesting. All right, so it's not horrible. So that's not uh, one of our issues. Could have a fan going out. We could have all kinds of things going on. Just don't know right yet. Especially if it's gonna make ice for a day or two or then finally slow production down. Really hard to say. Plus, one of the things we're running into right now is uh, it's cool in the evenings and uh, plus fairly warmer during the day. So that'll play games with the refrigerant also. Yeah, it would help to have known what the code was on the machine. So we'll see if we can turn it off and back on. It'll tell us, I think, the last one or two codes. That's not the newest blue um, controller, but it does have some diagnostics on it. So we'll see what we got there. All right, so come back down. It's already in harvest. Pretty sure it's about 175, about 85. Pretty thick cubes that should start dropping here. Okay, 
we've had times where they don't fall and then they end up just melting away. You can see some of the uh, clear signs that it's starting to release. It's not releasing very quickly. The top ones up here are starting to melt quite a bit. There it goes. Well, let's watch and see if we can see the uh, light flicker around the So these are one of those calls that are just great when everything works. Uh, looky there, I didn't turn it off. It went off on its own. One, two, three, one, two. Two flashes on the water. I did hear a squeak out of it when it shut off. May have a control module taking a poo poo. Two waters. I'll have to read through the book here. All I got is the one for the blue one, which is very similar. Two blinks for water. Okay, water section. Blinks two times and repeats. Water level not rising fast enough. Lack of water supply. Filters restricted. Low pressure. Standpipe height incorrect. Purge valve leaks through. Water leaks out of sump. All right, well. Water level is not horribly low. May have to start this over again to see what we get. It was very, uh, there's some of our marks. So yeah, I think maybe it might be getting a little ahead of itself, but start over again. Hit the off button, clear that out. Yeah, look at our water pressure. Instantly down to zero. You can see I've had this before because I wrote 30 over 35 while filling with new water filter. So water filter is our issue. But, yeah, see the trickle? Not the quickest thing in the world. Wow. This one's a uh, mind boggler, ain't it? All right, yeah, see the water pressure come back up to about 40, about 50, 55. So we're gonna get a new water filter on there. That one there's nine months old. Obviously the water here's uh, pretty uh, bad, even though it's city water. It uh, all comes out of a reservoir and for some reason has some of the highest calcium build up in, as I've seen. Okay, so to bleed her wide open, we're at 20 pounds. So make sure when you change these that you're bleeding these out, it gets all the carbon to build up and stuff out of there. I think it's somewhere right around five gallons you're supposed to run through it. And that just purges down the drain down there. And while we're at it, we're gonna go ahead and do us a little cleaning because it looks a little bit dirty. Everybody's favorite, I know. Right, we'll go through, we'll get some of this nasty stuff cleaned out. Get the bottom there all drained out, and we'll get her all cleaned up. So, all this gray stuff down here that I'm stirring up, that's the nickel coating they put on the plate a lot of times. So I'm gonna get this all stirred up, and it usually stays in the bottom, so it doesn't usually go anywhere major. But we're gonna stir that up, and then I like to pull my little drain tube here and that helps siphon it all out. A little bit better than hoping it eventually strains it out. So, we'll stir that up and get some of this crap out of here. There we go. And then we can either wipe the rest out with a towel or whatever. But we're just gonna try to get some of the obvious stuff out of there and get it cleaned up as best as possible. That way, we've done everything we can do make sure it stays reliable. We ended up getting it pretty cleaned up, tore it completely apart, got all a lot of munk and funk and junk out of there, made yeah. it look a lot nicer. So, still got some more cleaning to do on it yet. All right, so we got all that washed out, got all that washed out, just basically poured water in there. 
this calcium crap, you're not going to get it off very easily without scrubbing for days. And it's uh, looking a lot better than what it was. So it'll be at least now healthy and clean and working good. So we got it all back together. Everything's clean now. Like I said, we got a little calcium here. So we got all that nasty funk and junk off of it. Got uh, some cleaner running through it right now. So once this is done with that part, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get her running to make sure she runs okay, which I think we're gonna be fine. Our water pressure stayed high the whole time uh, that we were doing the fill. So we're gonna go ahead and probably say we're fine on the refrigerant charge. You've seen how fast it froze down and dropped. So and the cubes look normal. So between that and just the usual maintenance, what we needed, um, that's probably all we're gonna need to do. <clears throat> the filter I got the date on it and I put on there change at six months to eight month area but whether that gets done we'll find out so right now the uh, water seems to be trailing down pretty good like I said we got all this completely disassembled and cleaned which just is the easiest way to do it just take the whole pump out and everything like that and uh, just get her all cleaned up there's not a whole lot left on this uh, plate as far as any nickel coating, so I mean that is what makes the ice drop off a lot easier. But with these machines here, they're pretty resilient and do a pretty good job even when they don't have it. So it won't be a humongo deal. Uh, so all we gotta do is just run it through and see how it does. So far, so good. Starting to freeze down. Got everything tightened up. So we'll see what we get here. So we just went into harvest. Take a peekaroo right here. You can see it's changing colors a little bit. Wisconsin's one of the few that turns on the uh, water to help make it fall out. Manitowoc doesn't usually do it. <laughs> Can't remember if Hajisaki does or not. And we do have two plates on this, so it's uh, putting on quite a bit of ice when it does it. that cleaned up a little bit better too when uh, I was able to use the, the uh, solution there from the panel on it and uh, everything looks pretty pretty clean now. The main thing like I said is just the calcium and it's just an old machine but if it's working you know so be it. Harvest is about done. Make sure this thing goes into a free cycle again and we will call it quits. So basically a uh, dirty filter and a dirty machine. Uh, you gotta go with that humongous picture. I mean, humongous picture. Not just big, I mean we gotta go humongous picture. That way you know that you don't just fix the one problem, you go for multiples. So, uh, yeah, it could have gotten away with probably not cleaning it, but that's not really doing a good service for the customer. It also leaves you on the hook if someone else comes out and finds it, it needs clean. So the biggest thing uh, in this field is making sure you don't get callbacks any more than you need to. Uh, any unnecessary ones that are preventable. We're not perfect, but we definitely can try to do it as best as we can. Now the first harvest on uh, power backup, I'm pretty sure is a lot longer than normal. But once it's running, I believe it goes and shorts itself up a little bit. It's kind of getting a baseline. I'm kind of going off of memory. Like I said, I think we sold the Scotsman long ago, but now obviously we do Manitowoc, so I don't always remember everything on them, but I do quite a few of them, just not all the time. So this should go back into freeze here any minute now. All right, so it went back into freeze, and it's freezing down. So I'm gonna say we're probably good to go. The water seems to be trailing across the panel pretty good. It's already gotten quite a distance into it. So we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up. If you guys like the video and wanna see more like it, make sure you subscribe and click that thumbs up button and we'll catch you guys on the next one.